Hello, welcome back to another video series of Kaki DIY's 3D printing video. In today's video, let's look at some fundamental 3D printing issues that needed to be solved right out of the box before you can get perfect and nice prints like this. I've gotten a lot of feedbacks from people saying that, you know, this particular 3D printer is not reliable, there's a lot of issues with it, but I realized that if these steps are followed, these fundamental problems might go away. So, let me show you 12 tips plus some bonus tips to make your 3D printer, especially these particular ones, more reliable and print perfect prints right out of the box. Prints like this. Number 1. Using a square. By using a square, you can make sure that the gantry and all the axes are straight and aligned. This will greatly impact your print quality, especially for tall prints or square prints. More details are in my detailed installation guide. Number 2. Adjusting the rollers. All the rollers on all the axes, including the hot end, are equipped with eccentric nuts which you can tighten or loosen. So by tightening the rollers, you can make sure that the rollers are contacting the gantries properly and rolling properly. But too tight will give you some bumps or prematurely wear them out. Number 3. Aligning runoff sensors. My runoff sensors from the factory is slightly off. You can see it quite obvious here. Just loosen these nuts and you can realign the runoff sensors. So if it's not straight, this is what's going to happen. Your filament will break easily, especially during retraction. So just realign it and tighten it and you are done. Let's test it out right now. Yep, perfectly straight in. And even retraction won't break the filament now. Number 4. Tie up the cables. When the hot end on the X-axis moves around, it will pull the cable along with it. The ANET ET4 was designed in such a way it helps us connect all these cables easier using this coupling. However, if it's moving around, these couplings might come loose. So what we're going to do is just to cable tie them up and you will solve a lot of problems like sensors not reading or hot end not heating up. There you go. Number 5. Grease the lead screw. From the factory itself, the lead screw is not greased up and it can be a little bit rough. I usually apply some white lithium grease to all the lead screws of my 3D printer. After carefully applying just a little bit, I will then gently push the whole Z-axis up and down a few times to evenly spread out the white lithium grease on the lid screw. So do it a few times and if there's any residue to it, you can just use a little bit of tissue paper and dab it off. Number 6. Tightening the belts. So for this particular one, for the X-axis and the Y-axis, always make sure that the belt tightness are almost the same to make sure that you have consistency in your prints. The steps are fairly straightforward. Both the belts are actually tightened by the motor. There are four nuts holding the motor tight. So just loosen them, readjust it and tighten the nuts again. Once you're done, test the belt tightness. Number seven, fix bait wobbling issues. So these are also accessible using the eccentric nuts on the rollers. If they are not tight, the bait will wobble. If they are too tight, you will get bumps when you move the bait. Number 8. Free up the Bowden tube. Factory design of the ANET ET4, the Bowden tube seems to be taped up together with the rest of the cable. So freeing them up will make sure that the Bowden tube can move freely and also helps you remove the Bowden tube whenever you get some clock and you can easily just uh, clean it up or swap the Bowden tube as well. So just cut off all these tips and then you have a free Bowden tube. And with that, you can easily unclog or do maintenance on it. 
It will also prevent the Bowden tube from moving around and breaking the filaments inside. Number 9. Manual Bed Leveling Of course, the ANET ET4 comes with auto bed leveling. However, this step is crucial to make sure that the bed is level and aligned with the gantry. Number 10. Heat up the bed and nozzle before auto bed leveling. This is also a step that a lot of people missed because if you don't heat up the bed and the nozzles, bed and nozzles when they are hot expands. So if you don't do that, the bed leveling might not be accurate and you will get inconsistent prints or the filaments not laying down properly in your first layer. Number 11. Please, please, please clean your print surfaces especially for the glass bed. I actually don't use any hairsprays or glue whenever I use the glass surface. I just make sure that they are very, very clean. So if you're using just this particular surface, you can always use an alcohol pad like this, which is disposable, or use any alcohol agent to make sure that the surface is very clean. With a clean and properly leveled bed, you won't have problems of filament laying down the first layer. Number 12, the environment. My pretty printer is very near to the window. So that is bad because wind can come in and disrupt the print. So make sure that the windows are closed. I draw the curtain and reposition my 3D printer so that my filaments are not brushing on my curtain and the bed can move freely. 3D printing is very sensitive to environmental temperatures so make sure that the environmental temperatures are consistent and there are no stray winds coming through to disrupt your prints. Bonus tip, Cura settings. So for the Cura slicer, of course there's some experiment that you need to do but for the ANET ET4, you can easily get the profile from the Ultimaker Cura itself and tweak some certain settings. I usually like to print using 0.1 file profile and then from there, I tweak a little bit like the wall thickness. I like to have it 1mm and then uh, the infill is up to you. Usually 10% is good enough for me. Temperature is up to the filament that you use and the print speed, although ANET ET4 can handle faster speed, I realized that 60 mm per second print speed is good enough. And the retraction, to avoid stringing, I usually put 7 mm. And the retraction speed is 30 mm per second. And other than that, uh, I like to just use skirt and two line counts so that during the filament laying down, I can monitor to make sure that it's sticking properly. Uh, I do create another one for 0.2. Most of it is the same as well. I eventually can bump it up to 100 mm per second print and it's still looking fine. I hope that these tips will help you in your 3D printing journey. In the next video, I'm going to show you a comparison between this particular ANET ET4 and ET4 Pro and ET4 Plus comparing with our ever famous other models of 3D printers. So stay tuned, see you next time. Bye-bye.